Hello, good afternoon, Yuri. Good afternoon, friend. How are you? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay, and you? Very well, very well, thank you. You are welcome. Okay. Good afternoon, hey, everybody. Another class. Today is Tuesday, our first class this week. This week is going to be a little bit um, a little bit special in the sense that uh, we are supposed to have our first mock test in quarantine because next class we have the mock test number five since we uh, have we are about to finish unit number 10. I think that we can finish unit number 10 today. So next class, we are going to take our first uh, mock test. This mock test of, our, of ours is going to be dealing with use of English and reading comprehension. That's why the homework that I'm going to check now is reading comprehension because I wanted to practice for the exam. The reading comprehension this time was about a man who was a famous pianist, Barack. Yes, and I'm going to begin checking the eight questions that you have on page seven. I think I have a photocopy of the page here. Yes. So let's see the homework. Everybody prepare to check the, the homework. Number one, how did Barack feel about playing the piano when she was very young? And you have four options, A, B, C, or D. What's your opinion, friends? For Frankie, is A. And for Paula, A. For Lydia, A. For Manny, is A. For Paula Herrera, oh my God, I have two Paulas, uh, I always forget, is A, and George is A. Okay, A is the correct answer, friend. You have one mark, you have one mark because your answer is perfect. She really enjoyed it. How did she feel the first time she performed in front of, the, uh, of an audience? And again, A, B, C, or D, opinions. Frankie, C, Claudia, C, P, H, C, Lydia, C, M, C, Manny, C, Mike, C. Very good, friends. Let us see is the correct, George, C. C is the correct answer. Happy and relaxed. Three, why did Barack feel different from her, from, from her friends when she was at school? A, B, C, or D? What's your opinion? Frank C, Claudia C, Mike C, and George C, PH C, and PV C. Exactly. C is the correct answer because she was the only one who wanted to become a musician. For why does she say it is important to meet and talk to all the musicians at, the, at her college, A, B, C, or D in number four? D for Claudia, D for Mike, D for Paula, P PH, sorry. Uh, for Frankie, is letter D, George D, and Lydia D. Yes, friends, D is the correct answer because it increases her possibility of being asked to perform. Five, when she says in line 22 that in the music business, it's all about recognition and getting your name out there, what does she mean? A, B, C, or D? Frank B, Mike B, Claudia B, George B, PH B, and PV B. Exactly. B is the correct answer. It's important that lots of people know what she does and know her name. Six, why does the college environment often feel like a constant battle 
A, B, C or D? B for PH, B for Lydia, B for George. And nobody else. Okay, the correct answer in number six is letter A, because there isn't enough work for everyone. Six, A. Seven, why did Barack decide to go into a, a accompaniment? A, B, C, O, D. Frank A. Frank D, my God. Mike D, George D. Lydia D, Ph D. And yes, friends, the answer is D because she likes working as part of a team. Eight, what does she say is, is the best thing about studying and pursuing a career in music? A, B, C, or D? C for Claudia, C for Frankie, C for George, C for Mike, C for Lydia, C for PH. Yes, friends, she spends all her time doing something she loves. Letter C is perfect. Conclusion, P, H, C, okay. In number one is letter A. In number two is letter C. In number three is letter C. In number four is letter D. In number five is letter B. In number six, A. In number seven, D. And in number eight, C. There are eight answers. So you are supposed to have minimum five correct answers to pass this imaginary reading comprehension evaluation. And now let's go to the student's book, page 117. Let's go there, 117 student's book. Because on page 117, we have a kind of summary of everything we studied in unit number 10. And that's important because next class we have an evaluation, so everything that helps us to study is perfect in this moment. The vocabulary of unit number 10. The vocabulary of unit number 10 is in two pages of the book. One part is on page 110 and the other part is on page 111. And that is important to know because maybe you need to revise it. Read the text and decide which answer, A, B, C, O, D, best fits each gap. And they give you a text with eight blanks, but they give you, uh, they give you um, possibilities, you know. Except zero, which is the example as always, you have to select between or among A, B, C, O, D. I'm going to give you some minutes, but I would appreciate that you send me a message as soon as you finish, right? I will be waiting.
Money has finished. Lydia finished. And PH. And PV also. And George. Very good. I think we can check it. Let's see. According to recent research, teenagers are very, uh, very, and they say in zero is let it be sensitive, are very sensitive to price. They hunt for number one. What is the letter for you? A, B, C, or D? For Lydia is C, for Claudia is C, for Money is C, for PV is C, for George is C, for PH is C. C is correct. C means Bergens. Very good. They hunt for Bergens and consider high prices a personal insult. They plan their shopping and they don't just... Number two, what is your letter in number two? You have into. So for Lydia is B, for Claudia is B, for PV is B, for George is B, for Money is B, and for Paula Herrera is B. Pop into. Very good, friends. B is the correct answer in number two. Pop into shops and buy on impulse. Interestingly, parents have a lot of three. What is it in number three? D for money, D for Lydia, D for Paula. Well, I say Paula, Paula, but it's PV, PhD. Okay, well, and, and for Claudia, it's letter D in number three. Influence is the answer, letter D, yes. Parents have a lot of influence, both over how much teenagers spend on clothes and what they buy. Even if the teenagers have uh, number four, A for Claudia, A for PV, A for Lydia, A for PH, A for George, A for money. Very good, friends. A is the answer. Earned. Earned the money themselves from a part-time job. In short, teenagers worry about their parents' reaction to the clothes they, they five. What about five? B for money. B for PH, B, C for Claudia Varela, C for PV, and for George is B, and for Lydia is B. Well, in number five is letter C, purchase. They purchase, uh, comprar, right? Shops operate in a highly, number six, B for PV, B for money, B for Lydia uh, and for PH is B, George B, Claudia B. Yes, friends, B competitive is the answer. Definitely, yes. Competitive environment. So they make sure to number seven. B for Claudia, B for Lydia. For PH is B. For PV is B, for George is B, very good, friends, for money is B, cater for B is the correct answer. Cater for young people's tastes by having a wide range of fashion clothes in blank at any, at any one time. What is it in number I, uh, eight? What letter you think it is? Well, for PV is A, for money is A, for Claudia is A. And for Lydia A, for George A, and PH A, correct. Stock is the correct answer. Very good, friends. Very good. I don't know how many correct answers you have. With five, you have enough. You are passing. Let's see the grammar of unit number 10. The grammar of this unit is on page 112. I mentioned the page in case you have to revise it when you are doing this exercise. Well, typical 
exercise in your exam. Complete the second sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first sentence using the word given. Don't change the word given. You must use between two and five words, two minimum, five maximum, including the word given. Well, let's do this exercise. It takes time because you need to concentrate a lot. Use the dictionaries and translator if you need. When you finish, send me a message.
Mani finished, Claudia finished, Lydia finished. And Mike? And PH finished too. PV finished. George finished very good and Frankie. Let's check it out. Manu didn't succeed in completing the crossword. You have to use able. You have the options between two and five words. What is the solution? Money blank of the crossword. For Claudia was not able to take, for Frankie was not able to pay off, for Lydia wasn't able to finish, and for PV was not able to finish. Yes, good, P Paula, very good. Yes, I understood, Paula. And for money was not able to solve. Well, the correct, correct, correct answer is was not able to finish, you know, because you have off. Finish off is to complete. Solve off doesn't exist. That's why we cannot use solve. Right, a payoff changes the meaning. Take off, change the meaning. The only possibility is to finish off because finish off is to complete. Manu wasn't able to finish off the crossword. Now we learn a new phrase, Albert, finish off. Number two, we need to use less paper. You have to use amount. We need to cut blank paper we use. What is the solution? Down the amount of for PV. Cut down amount of Frankie. Down the amount of Claudia Varela. And nobody else. Okay, friends, the answer is we need to cut down the amount of paper. Yes, so down the amount of. It is possible to use on, you know, because many times we use on. Example, we need to cut down on the amount of paper we use acceptable because we say cut down on, reducir, cut down on the amount of paper. Katia found the climb so tiring that she fell asleep at the at the top, and you have to use worn. Uh, she was tired, worn, and we study a phrasal verb that is similar to tired. Katia blank the climb that she fell asleep at the top. The climb, la ascensión, the climb. What is the option here? For Claudia, it has worn out during. And nobody, only Claudia. For Lydia, it was worn out. For PH, has worn out. For George, has worn out. Very similar. Well, worn out is correct. For PV, felt so worn out. I, I like that. I like that. It, it was... I, okay, Frankie, don't worry. We are going to learn this expression. Imagine that the perfect is very similar. It's very similar to PV. It is. Caria, two possibilities. Was, acceptable, felt, very good. I repeat, Katia was or Katia felt so, similar to PV, so worn out, and now we need the preposition by by the climb, por la ascensión, por la subida, perdón, creo que se dice más 
en español la subida que la ascensión. So, I repeat the answer. Y debíamos copiarla porque puede salir en examen. Katia, voy a usar was. Was so worn out by the climb that she fell asleep at the top. Voy a usar felt. Katia felt so worn out by the climb that she fell asleep at the top. Please, if your answer is not similar, write down this one. Let's go to number four. Pierre was unable to suggest an answer to the problem, and you have to use com. Pierre blank, an answer to the problem. What did you write in the blank? Well, for Lydia, it couldn't come up with. For Frankie, couldn't come up with. For PV, couldn't come up with. For Claudia, couldn't come up with. Yes. For PH, couldn't come up with. Very good, friends. Yes, you are right. Everybody is right. The same, George. Thank you. Very good. Pierre, couldn't come up with an answer to the problem. Excellent, everybody. Five, did you manage to collect pass from the station? And now you have to use the synonym of collect. It is a phrasal verb we use in pick. Were you blank from the station? What in the blank? Able to pick up for money, able to pick pass up, Lydia. PV, able to pick pass up, Claudia. Able to pick up pass, Frankie. Able to pick pass up. Very good, friends. PH, able to pick pass up. Very good. Were you able to pick pass up from the station? Very good. Very good. Uh, it is also possible to use, were you able to pick up pass? Yes, acceptable too. Six, when Alexis reached the cinema, the film had finished. And you have to use get. Alexis didn't blank. The film was over. What is your answer here? For PV, get to the cinema until. For Claudia, get in time because. For Lydia, get to the cinema until. Frankie boy, get to the cinema until. PH, get to the cinema until, and for money, get to the cinema before. Well, according to Cambridge, the answer is Alexis didn't get to the cinema until the film was over. Many people were right. Get to the cinema until. Very good. Congratulations for the people who did it right. Exercise three, grammar. We continue in grammar. It is dealing with us and like that we study in unit number 10, and you have all the information on page 107, in, in case you want to check it out. Page 107. When my grandfather left the school at the age of 14, he got his first job, an office assistant. What is us or like that we used to speak about jobs? As for Claudia, and Claudia is correct. Yes, Lydia, very good, PV. As is perfect when I mention my job. I work as a teacher in, a, in an academy, for example. He works as a doctor at a hospital, etc. But sometimes it is very confusing if using like or using as. It is confusing. So when you finish this exercise, send me a message to check it out.
media finished. And Manny and PV and Frankie finished. I'm going to read it. When my grandfather left school at the age of 14, he got his first job as an office assistant. In those days, he was extremely thin. As he wasn't paid very much and couldn't afford to eat a lot. In number two, us. But he was in the same situation as a lot of boys at that time. As most children left the school at the age, at that age, sorry, and had to look for a job. I have one or two photos of him from that time, and he looks just like me, but thinner. When he grew older, he worked at all sort of things, such as reporting for a local newspaper and working as a part-time mechanic. Like many people of his generation, he worked hard all his life, but he always found time for the things he enjoyed, like walking in the country or spending time with his grandchildren. I hope I'll be like him when I'm an old man. So in number one is us, in number two is us, in number three is us, in number four is us, in number five is like, in number six is us, in number seven is us, in number eight is like, in number nine is like, and in number ten is like. Check it out, friends, because this was the topic we started in unit number ten. Something that is pending from unit number ten is the speaking of the unit. And it is on page 113. So let's go to page 113. Speaking part one. And you have the four questions over there in exercise one. Question number one. What things do you enjoy spending money on? This is the moment of personal questions. And you are supposed to answer the question according to your experience. It is not important everything you say. The important thing is that you participate. I repeat the question. What things do you enjoy spending money on? Maybe Claudia can answer this question. Claudia, uh, what things do you enjoy buying and spending money on? Uh, well, I like uh, spending my money on clothes. Yes. Uh, do you prefer buying your clothes uh, on the web, uh, uh, on the internet, or do you prefer the physical shops? Uh, no, I prefer going to the uh, physical shops because I can feed it. Yes. Um, I can uh, maybe I I am looking for something and in the shop uh, finally um, I I found other uh, items. So that's yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I I agree with you. I, I love touching you know, things. Uh, if I'm going to buy a shirt or a t-shirt, I like touching the fabric to see if the quality is the one I, I want. And I I love trying it on, you know, try trying the clothes on before buying things. Very good, Claudia. Thank you very much. The question is, what things do you enjoy spending money on? George, what about you, friend? 
Me, for example, now in quarantine, uh, I spend my money on computer games for ah, PS4. Yes. You, you buy the games? Yes. But uh, how, I mean, uh, do you buy it on internet? Yeah, I, I buy in PS4 store. Uh-huh. That is, is like a shop in of PS4. Very good. And they, they bring it to your house? No, uh, it's an uh, um, online model, I think. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Are they very expensive? No, no, not now. No, no. Now we are a lot of sales. So it's, for example, 14, 15 or oh. 20, for example. Yes, it is affordable. Yes, yeah. yes, very good. Thank you, thank you very much, George. Thank you. The second question is, what do teenagers in Spain typically spend their money on? I don't know, because I'm an old man, but maybe you have a, a brother or a sister who are, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 years old, and you observe uh, what are the things that they normally spend the money on. Do you have any idea about this, PH? Uh, I think in food, in clothes, uh, games for the computer, and then. Yes, yes. Uh, another student told me that, Paula. They say that normally teenagers spend a lot of money on technologies, you know, video games and things like that. Yes. Good. Paula, thank you very much, man. The other question is, do you have a favorite shop? Uh, a place where you like the clothes or you like the shoes or you like something you normally buy and you like the shop? This question maybe is for Lydia. Yes, I, I know Casa del Libro, yes, yes. Um, for example, for the clothes, maybe uh, birth cow or something like that. But birth cow, Clara, that it's in the, um, in the center of Madrid because it's more bigger than the other that you can find in the, I don't know. Yes, uh, I, I like Casa del Libro, but I don't know why, Lydia, I prefer FNAC, you know? Uh, uh, I, this is my favorite shop, maybe, maybe. So, uh, me, for example, I prefer Casa del Libro because you can find more books that in F, than in, F, in FNAC, for example, because in FNAC there are other type of things that you can find, for example, technology or something like that, and it's not very focused in the in the books. So. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, you are right. Yes, Casa del Libro is totally, totally books. Yeah. While FNAC has many appliances, electrodomestic appliances, a lot of appliances, and yes, yes, it's not concentrated on books. You are right. Yes. I like FNAC because uh, the CDs, you know, uh, you have the possibility of listening to the CD before buying it. So you listen to every song and then you finally decide if buying the CD or not. Yeah, and Sometimes you can read the book if you want. So there are um, little rooms. So if you want to to read the books. Yes, there are many people reading books there. Yes, I yeah. have seen that. Thank you, thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Do you have a favorite shop, Manny? Yes, um, I like so much. Uh, Casco Antiguo is the name of the shop, and he has got, he have got uh, a lot of material of uh, scuba diving, and I shop in this uh, and I buy in this shop in November because mm -hmm. uh, he has got a lot of uh, material material uh, of scuba diving out of the summer. Uh, and money. So uh, the conclusion is that you practice scuba diving. Yes. 
Ma, uh, is it risky money? Mm, I don't know uh, which is the um, the true an the true answer because for me no, but for my mother yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. For for me it's dangerous, but maybe if I practice it. Uh, I get confident. Maybe I, I can get confident with the sport and practice it. But some people say that it's wonderful. Yeah, is it wonderful? Yes, for me, yes. Thank you, Manny. Thank you very much, friend. The final question, is there anything you would like to buy? Something that you dream of? Something that you want, but you can't afford? Because it's very expensive. I repeat the question. Is there anything you would like to buy but can't afford because it is too expensive for you? Who can answer this? PV, can you answer this? Varela, can you answer this? Perhaps a shining ship. Yes. Hi, do you hear me? I have a, a problem with my headphone. Um, you... I hear you now perfectly yeah. well. Okay, perfect. Uh, I would like to, to buy a, a boat, maybe, yes. because I really like the sea. And if I, if I will be rich, maybe I have a boat and maybe... In the north of Spain, in Galicia or uh, País Vasco, I would like to to park the boat and maybe or in in summer, for example, I can go to a little island in in the north, like yes. Islas Cies, for example, in, in Galicia or something like that. Let me tell you a story. Paula, you know, <laughs> yeah. one of my best friends, uh, Oscar is the name, in Miami, he told me that he had two very, very happy moments in his life. One was when he bought a judge and it was fantastic for him because he was dreaming of buying the judge and finally he could afford it and he bought it. It was not, you know, a, a big judge. No, it was a small one, but beautiful. And it was fantastic because in Miami, there is a moment every year where people take their boats and judge and go to some little islands near, near the Gulf. And they celebrate the Columbus Day. And it's like madness, you know, is everybody brings a uh, um, drinks and food and music and in the middle of the sea they begin dancing and passing from one judge or boat to the other to the other and it is hours and hours of party in the middle of the sea fantastic but my friend Oscar told me that that was one of the most happy or one of the happiest moments in his life when he bought the, 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 the boat the judge and the other very, very happy moment in his life was when he finally could sail the boat, right? Because it is a constant wasting of money. You have to be spending money constantly. You have to pay for the service when you take the boat to the coast. Yes, be because you need to pay the boat and you have to pay for that. And you have to pay for people cleaning and painting the boat because constantly you have to paint it because of the salt. Yes. So he, he told me, friend, I was happy when I bought it, but I was happier when I sold it. Huh? So uh, my, my advice, Paula, is don't buy a boat. Rent it. Rent it. Okay, friends. This is the speaking part of unit number 
10, four questions that maybe in your real, real exam in Cambridge, they can ask you. So you have to be prepared for that. The four questions are, what things do you enjoy spending money on? What do teenagers in Spain typically spend the money on? Do you have a favorite shop? Describe it. Is there anything you would like to buy but can't afford? These questions are important for you in case Cambridge select this unit, unit number 10 for your speaking part one personal questions. Thank you for participating in this. Now let's go to page 192. Imagine that 192 in the student's book. Let's see if I can show you the page 192. This one. Because in unit number 10, the writing, the writing practice in unit number 10 refers to reviews. In unit number four, and now we are in unit number six, right? Uh, sorry, now we are in unit number 10. In unit number four, we wrote a review, but it was many, many, many weeks ago. Imagine that that was when we were living a normal life and we were in the academy, etc. We wrote a review and maybe now, May, you don't remember. That's my work. My work is to remind you the characteristic of a review because I need you to be prepared for the exam in case that Cambridge selects reviews for you to write. Reviews. Reviews in Spanish is una reseña, una crítica. No me gusta crítica because it seems to be bad. Anyway, we have positive and negative uh, what? Uh, uh, Criticism, you know, can be good or bad. But reseña, I think is better. There are reviews about restaurants. Reseñar un restaurante. That is, to describe it for other people to read the review and decide going to the restaurant or not. A review. In your exams, there are two possible reviews. One review can be about restaurants and, and coffee shops, and the other review can be about a book or a film. They are similar, but with little differences. Right? In, in this page, page 192, that you can see on the screen if you want, it is referring to a review about books and films, right? Let's analyze this. It says reviews. You studied and practiced writing reviews in Unit 4 and now in Unit 10. It says exercise 1, underline. They like underlining and there is a reason for that, but we don't have time for this. Imagine that in the exam you receive a chart similar to the box that you have here. I'm going to read it for you. You see this announcement in your school's English language magazine. Have you seen a film or read a book recently that you think everyone would enjoy? So they give us the possibility of choosing a film or a book. Huh? Good. We want to know about it. Write a review of the film or book saying what it's about and why we would all enjoy it. Well, this is an example of a review where Cambridge is not giving you many information or much, sorry, much information, right? 
but conclusion. You are going to write a review. The review can be about a film or a book you, you choose. You have the possibility of selecting one or the other. If you select a book, the title, because reviews need title. Don't forget that. Reviews need title. No more, only title. If you write a review about a book, you need to mention the author. You need to mention the author. If you select a film, you don't need to write anything else but the title. The title could be the title of the book or the title of the film. No problem with that. Observe the example you have here. Between parentheses, no, sorry, between quotation, in Spanish, uh, comillas, between Quotation, The Time Traveler's Wife, because this is the title of the book. It is a book. So the title of my review is similar to the title of the book. But you use quotation. Tenemos que usar comillas. And now the author, using the preposition by. By Audrey Niffenegger. See that? Imagine that you want to write about uh, 100 years of solitude. You copy the title of your review is between quotation 100 years of solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. You have to mention the author using by. But if you choose a film, imagine the Star Wars, you write between quotations Star Wars and nothing else. You don't have to mention in the title. In the title, you don't have to mention the director of the film or nothing. Do you understand this? So a review is about a restaurant or a coffee shop or about a film or a book. If it is a book, the title of the review is the title of the book and the author. If it is a film, the title of the review is the title of the film. No more than that. And now, the introduction. It is, I am going to read again the instruction you receive. We want to know about it. Write a review of the film or book saying what is what it's about. So in paragraph number one, the introduction, you don't have to copy introduction. It's not necessary here. But you always write the first paragraph, which is the introductory paragraph. It's an introduction. And in the introduction, uh, it is very important that you tell what the title is about. For example, the time travels wife. In this example, you have to you have to tell the readers, hay que contarles al lector. You have to tell the reader what this is about. If it is a book or a magazine, or if it is an article in a newspaper, or if it is a film, you have to say that. Okay. So paragraph number one is to explain the people reading your review what it is about. It is a film or whatever. But they want you to say what the film, if it is a film, or what the book, in case of a book, is about. So if I were you, I would write a very short introductory paragraph telling the people, imagine that it's a book, that I read the book when I was, I don't know, 16 years old, blah, blah, blah. In paragraph number two, I would mention the author. I would mention the plot. The plot is the queva, la historia, the plot. And I would mention some of the, uh, what? Some of the characters, personajes, right? What else? So now I have three paragraphs, uh, sorry, two paragraphs, introduction, paragraph number two. And now they want 
I they want me to write why we would all enjoy it. Uh -huh. So why people can enjoy the book in case of a book or why people can enjoy the film in case of a film. And this could be my conclusion, right? My final paragraph, three paragraphs. Why three and no four? Because I have to answer only two things. I'm going to read the instruction again. We want to know about it. Write a review of the film or book saying what it's about, one, and why we would all enjoy it, two. So the introduction plus two, they are three. But sometimes, my friends, Cambridge ask you for more information, and in that case can be four. So the number of paragraphs in the review depends on the quantity or on the number, sorry, on the number of questions that they ask you about. I would like you to read the what? The suggestions that you have on the right column. Give your review a title. Don't forget that. If you are writing about a book, the title is the title of the book. If you are writing about a film, the title is the title of the film. But in case of a book, mention the author. Now, I continue reading on the right. Mention the type of book or the type of film. The type. Well, in case of film, it can be a drama or it can be a thriller or it can be science fiction, you know or a love story, or a comedy. The book can be history book, or it can be fiction book. Do you understand? So the type of book or the type of film can be in the introduction. Mention the characters. See that? Los personajes. That's important. Some of the story, un poquito de la historia. What makes the book or the film different? Hmm? You can mention that porque considera que es interesante el libro o la película que lo hace un poquito diferente a los otros. These are suggestions. Uh, it's not compulsory. No son obligatorios, son ideas. Now, use plenty of adjectives to describe. Yes, friends. Yes, yes. This is something that you need to use more frequently in your writings. Adjectives. Modify everything because when you use adjective, you make your writing more descriptive, right? So describe the book, dec describe the film. You can also describe with adjectives how you feel when you watch the film, how you felt when you read the book, etc. Now, I continue the right column. They give you some suggestions which are going to be important for you, ways of praising. And this is exceptionally good for the final paragraph, for the conclusion, when you, you know, normally we recommend something, etc. Observe the examples. I think everyone will enjoy this book, if you are reviewing a book, or I think everybody, everyone will enjoy this film if you are reviewing a film, this restaurant, if you are reviewing a restaurant, this coffee shop, if you are reviewing a coffee shop, etc., etc. Because this is the important part. You have to explain why. Because, and then tell the people why you consider that everyone will enjoy the film or book or restaurant. Okay, now the second. This book or this film or this restaurant, depending, is really worth, in case of a book, reading. Example, this book is worth reading, vale la pena leerlo, una película. This film is worth seeing, esta película vale la pena verla, see that? Imagine that it is a restaurant. This restaurant is worth visiting, vale la pena visitar este restaurante, because, because, and you need to explain. Don't forget this, because 
because it is going to be important for next activity. Well, I wanted to begin the review on page 192 because here you have an example of reviewing a film or a book. But today we are going to practice the review not of a film or a book, the review of a restaurant or a coffee shop. Let's go to page 114 in the student's book, 114. Writing part two, a review. Look at this writing task and underline the key points you must deal with. And then you have exactly what you receive in the exam. A box like this. You see this announcement on your town's website for visitors. We want visitors to our town to enjoy themselves. Is there a place or, sorry, is there a place in or near our town where people your age, that is young people, right? People your age really like meeting up and having a good time. Write a review of the place, describing, and now they begin telling you what you have to write about, right? Be careful with this. Describing what type of place it is. What type of place it is. Is, is it a nightclub? Is it a shopping center? Is it a theme park, like, uh, for example, Warner? Or is it uh, an amusement park, Parque de Diversión, como el de Casa Campo? Uh, you have to tell, you have to describe what type of place it is. If you don't do that, you don't pass. Another, what people can do there, Ven, chicos, que aquí me piden más. Más párrafo tendré que hacer. So, another thing. What people can do there. All the activities that young people can do in that place that you are recommending. How to find a place. Huh? So, you have to mention if, if there is a train station or metro station near the place or if there, are, if there is a bus stop near the the, the, the place you are uh, recommending, etc., etc. How to find the place? You have to mention that the place is, uh, I don't know, in Getafe, and mention something that is near, I don't know. And why you particularly recommend it? This is the conclusion, the recommendation, right? Why you particularly recommend that place for young people? Friends. If you analyze the instruction and my advice is in the exam, read the instructions, underline the important things, because here I need to describe the type of place it is, what people can do there, how to find the place, and the conclusion, which is the recommendation, an introduction, and maybe four paragraphs would be ideal. Three, I think, is too, 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 uh, what? too few, too few. I, you need to write more about that. And you have to write clearly that you are describing the type of place that you are saying what people can do there. You must be clear how to find the place and in the end, make your recommendation. There is an example, you know, here on, on the next page. I mean, on page 114. Observe the title. The title is the name of the place. Cine City. Imagine that you want to recommend uh, Warner, Warner Park. The title is Warner Park. Right? No quotation. No habría comillas, because this is not the title of a book and this is not the title of a film. So no quotation. And then the initial paragraph, you have to tell 
what Cine City is. Huh? Is it a movie? Is it a theater? Is it a club? Is, is it a shopping center or what? You have to explain that in the introduction. And you need to remember, you need to remember the things they want you to say. You need to remember that they want you to tell, you see, what type of place it is. Well, this is the introduction. What people can do there is can be a paragraph. How to find the place can be another. Or if you want, in paragraph number two, you can join what people can do there and how to find it in only one paragraph. Why not? And then the conclusion. So they would be three. Some students prefer four, one for the introduction, the type of place, one for the activities people can do there, two, one for how to get to the place, very short, only explaining that there is a metro station near, uh, blah, 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 and the recommendation four. But if you connect what people can do there and how to find the place in just paragraph two and you do it perfectly well, no problem with that, okay? I go again to page 115 for the example you have there. This student wrote four, four paragraphs. He didn't want to have problem with the paragraphs, right? I want you to observe paragraph number one because I am checking a lot of reviews and report and letters these days and there are a lot of mistakes friends error numero uno que he encontrado estos días dentro del párrafo número uno o dos pero dentro de un párrafo chicos escuchen en español me ponen punto y aparte en cuanto pongo punto y aparte Cambridge me da me, 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 me penaliza Dentro de un párrafo todo es punto y seguido, punto y seguido, y no dejo espacios, punto y seguido, y no dejo espacio, punto y seguido. No sé cómo decirlo, porque todavía hoy me lo siguen, eh, eh, sigue ocurriendo, se les pasa, están pensando en qué escribir y no se percatan. Pero es un error fatal. Para mí es fatal, porque si yo pierdo puntos, porque hay una gramática que no la sabía, hay una expresión idiomática que no recordé, bueno, ¿qué se va a hacer? Esa es la vida de un estudiante, ¿cierto? Los únicos que no pierden un examen son los que no toman examen. Pero que yo pierda puntos por esas cosas duele mucho. O que yo pierda puntos porque no separé adecuadamente un párrafo del otro separándolo como está. Estoy viendo estos separados. Eh, no tiene perdón, no tiene perdón. Dentro de un párrafo todo es punto y seguido, punto y seguido y no dejo espacios. No dejo espacios porque... Si el profesor me examina, me está revisando mi trabajo a las nueve de la mañana, quizás tenga, esté fresco, esté de buen ánimo y me perdone la vida. Pero si tengo la desgracia de que ese profesor ya haya calificado 50 exámenes ante que yo no tengo ninguna posibilidad de perdón, recibiré el penalty porque me lo merezco. Chicos, I finish paragraph number one and immediately... I count the number of words because there is a minimum and there is a maximum. Minimum, 140 words. Maximum, 190. Remember. So please so the count. Number, so the number of words is the same uh, the review and other type yes. of writing? Yes. Everything you write in first certificate in English is 140 minimum. 190 maximum. Yes, yes, that's it. Okay, friends, so count the words and copy in one of the sides the number of words and begin the second. In the second paragraph, I'm going to tell the readers what people can do in that place and how, imagínense que quiero hacer tres párrafos, lo voy a unir, and how to find the place, right? If I want to write four, in paragraph number three, I write 
the activities, the many activities that young people can do in that place. And in paragraph number three, I'm going to explain, and it's going to be very short. I'm going to explain how to find the place, how to get there. And in the, in the final paragraph, paragraph four, I'm going to recommend it. And I'm going to explain why. In this recommendation, you can use the suggestions you have on page 192. OK. Vale la pena ir a este lugar. Recuerdan. This place, imagínense que sea Sanadu. Sanadu is worth visiting because, etc., etc. I repeat the conclusion. A, a review is una reseña, and you are going to review, in this case, a place. A place where young people can have fun in your town. Your town can be Getafe, Fuenlabrada, or Madrid. Huh? So imagine you have a lot of possibilities. The place can be real or fiction. You can you can make it up if you want, because the teacher in Cambridge are not going to come to Getafe to check if that place exists or not. So you can make it up, make it up, uh, inventártelo. You can make it up. And then you can create a lot of possibilities, bowling, and young people can see a film or can there is a discotheque and they can dance or, you know, a lot of things. What else? What else important for you? Very important for you is that this is not a homework for next class, friends. No, no, no. This is a homework for Tuesday next week. Because next class, we have an examination, right? And I, I don't want you to entertain yourselves writing this uh, review. What I want you to do is to study. What I want you to do is to take your book, right? Take your student's book, take your workbook, and study all the use of English exercises that we have from unit number one to unit 10. Unit one, two, three, all the units have a lot of exercises dealing with use of English. Study again. You have the answers, so you only have to check the ones that you made mistakes. Analyze your mistakes and think, my God, I cannot repeat this mistake again. Let's analyze it. Besides, I have, I have given you a lot of extra use of English exercises in papers, in copies, that I know you were placing carefully in plastic folders. Right? So take these papers, analyze everything we have practiced in class, use of English, right? No reading, no listening, right? Only use of English. The, the exams that we have taken before, because in, in classes we have, we have taken mock test one, mock test two, mock test three, mock test four. So take all this and study. It is impossible to study for listening. It is impossible to study for reading, right? So study use of English carefully, and I promise that you will have good results in this mock test number five. Friends, we are going to finish the class here. Remember, the homework is study for mock test five next class, and for Tuesday next week, Write the review on page 112. 12, no, 14. That is the homework. I'm going to copy the homework here. Homework. You on page 100 and what? And 14. But remember, this homework is not for Thursday. This homework is for 
Tuesday next week. Is that clear, friends? ¿Lo, lo han entendido? Yes. yes. Thank you. Es que hablo demasiado. Sorry, friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the end of the class. See you on Thursday for the mock test five. Good Thank luck. You. Bye, bye bye, friends. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Jerry. Yes. Eh, soy Manuel. Eh, una cosa. En cuanto a todos los ejercicios que hacemos y demás, pues hay en algunos que, pues obviamente tengo fallos y hay cosas pues, que a lo mejor no, puedo, no entiendo así a la primera y demás. Pero normalmente, pues sí que los apruebo. En plan, siempre paso más o menos uno más de la mitad. Por ejemplo, si son 10, pues sí que suelo tener 6 o más. Hay alguna vez que me quedo 5 o en 4, pero la mayoría de las veces sí los paso. Pero en cuanto a los listening, no hay manera. No sé cómo hacerlo ya, porque me pongo canciones, me pongo series en inglés, me veo capítulos en español y luego me los veo en inglés y es que me, no, no noto mucha mejoría. No, Manny, ¿verdad? tienes toda la razón, tienes toda la razón, escucha. Y si sigues eh, escuchar música en inglés y, y ver las películas tratando de escucharla y no leer, eh, es, es bueno, es bueno, pero te entiendo perfectamente, no te resuelve el problema de los exámenes. Pero sí en, en internet, Manny, hay un montón de ejercicios. Si tú pones en internet FCE, o sea, First Certificate in English, Listening Practice, ¿Sí? te, te sale una cantidad de ejercicios que, que están, en la, están en la red, ¿sabes? No lo puedes bajar, vale. pero no importa porque te, tú escuchas y te dan a responder preguntas y después dices si está mal o si vale. están bien y cuál es la respuesta correcta. Pero hay muchos. ¿Por qué es verdad, Mari? Te pones a escuchar música y, y es bueno porque te, te prepara el oído, pero no te va a ayudar para el examen. ¿eh? Porque tú necesitas escuchar con una intención, o sea, con un, un, una tarea que tengo que resolver, una pregunta que tengo que responder, un espacio en blanco que tengo que llenar. Tú necesitas esa práctica. Pero, pero en Internet te van a dar los cuatro tipos de listening que hay en, en Cambridge. Uno que es para llenar espacio en blanco, otro que es para seleccionar A, B, a, B C o D, Igual que el examen, yo te recomiendo que, que te dediques más a eso porque lo otro no te va a resolver el inmediato, el problema inmediato que tienes. Vale, es que eh, lo que hablamos en inglés, o sea, todas las aplicaciones que das y eso cuando explicas en inglés, como que a ti te entiendo, en plan, me entero de todo, excepto alguna palabra a lo mejor, pues que esa palabra no la sé, claro. pero, pero con el resto, con el contexto de la frase, pues yo sé lo que estás diciendo, pero es que en el listening, pues a lo mejor dicen, la pregunta es, eh, yo qué sé, eh, ¿Qué compraba Marta en el supermercado? Y dice, a ver, entró para comprar esto, pero luego le dijeron esto y luego fue sí. a por esto. Y, y entonces me lío y al final no sé qué. Así me, es. Me empieza a perder y no me... No me entero. Así es, así, así es, así es. Y te explico por qué. Es por el nivel de, de first, ¿sabes? Porque yo ta, eh, he tenido que dar todos los niveles y entonces noto la gran diferencia. Y ellos quieren que tú uses la inferencia, imagínate. En el first están evaluando la inferencia. Yo oigo una conversación y yo infiero que, imagínate, Manny, yo infiero que, porque ellos nunca llegan a decirlo. Y cuando lo dicen, a veces es hasta peor. Es, es verdad lo que tú dices. Dicen, la señora fue a comprar, eh, eh, qué sé yo, café. Y entonces la señora empieza a hablar que a veces el acento es irlandés, o sea, un acento que ya de por sí es difícil. Y la señora dice, yo entré a comprar café. El pobre chico yo café y ya puso café y no sigue tendiendo que después dice, pero vi el precio estaba muy alto, entonces decidí que no yo iba a comprar té, pero mi amiga que estaba cerca me dijo, ¿por qué compras té? porque no te compré una botella de Coca-Cola y al final lo que compró fue Coca-Cola es verdad claro, eso. Y es por eso que a lo mejor es lo que me pasa a mí, escucho café y digo, vale, es café, pero luego escucho té y digo, coño entonces, a lo mejor ya no es café. Y me empiezo a liar yo solo y en vez de sí. seguir escuchando, digo, a ver, había dicho café. Y empiezo a liarme con lo que ya han dicho y al final no, no escucho lo que dicen entero. Y me Exacto. cuesta muchísimo. Hay alguna, a lo mejor de 10, pongo dos bien o tres bien. O sea, es que me queda un montón. Pues yo te recomiendo que hagas esto. Ahora, a, de, dame un segundo. No te, no te vayas. Espera un segundo. Espera un segundo. Estoy quiero ver el examen vuestro. ¿Dónde está? Porque yo creo, yo creo que no tenemos listening esta vez. De, perdóname un segundo, Manny, por favor. Vale, vale, sí, no te preocupes.
Estoy buscando el examen. ¿Tienes clase ahora? Eh, no, 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 ya termino contigo. Ah, vale, vale, vale. Si no te hubiese tenido, imagínate, tendría que haberte cortado, pero como no tengo, no tengo, tengo prisa por ti. Vale, no, no te preocupes, yo tengo tiempo, no tengo nada. Sí, mira, no tenemos listening. Vale. Eh, es lectura y use of English, ¿sabes? No te preocupes esta vez, pero ya empieza a practicarlo para... Mira, sí, mira, sí, vale. te voy a pedir una cosa. No, no pierdas tiempo en el listening ahora. Quiero que te estudies todo el use of English que hemos visto, todos los ejercicios, los exámenes anteriores. Ya, todo yo, desde la, yo desde la unidad 1 no puedo, porque yo cuando me incorporé íbamos por la 9 ya, o por la 8, entonces... O, por ahí. Entonces, toda la primera parte no tengo ejercicios resueltos, pero bueno, me estudiaré toda la gramática que pueda y yo que sé. A ver... Man, y qué sale. desventaja, amigo, qué desventaja tremenda. Pero bueno, ¿qué se puede hacer si ya...? Ya, bueno, yo ya doy por hecho que para este año es imposible. Así que, bueno, pues que me sirva para el año que viene, porque es que me salta ocho unidades, así que hay, claro, hay muchas más cosas que no voy a poder hacer. Claro, es tienes una desventaja tremenda con respecto a los demás. Pero bueno, estás avanzando para el año que viene. Claro. De acuerdo, Manny. Vale, perfecto. Un abrazo, amigo. Igualmente, hasta luego. Hasta luego.